and look at that. We are currently in the only new car with romance mode. What's up YouTubers? It's your old buddy Hardworker12 and today I have a 2021 Tesla Model Y. Now I have driven many different makes and models of cars over my years, but interestingly, this is the first Tesla I've ever driven. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to review it. I'm gonna measure out the cargo space for you. We're gonna look at the passenger room. We're gonna have a look at the build quality, the interior features, and we're gonna take it on a test drive. Now, if some of that sounds interesting and some of it doesn't, check the description below for timestamps. So I got my tape measure. Let's measure out the cargo room. The length of the cargo area with the back seat up, 42 inches. Maximum width of the cargo area right at the back of it is five feet if you need to put something long in there. Minimum width in between the wheel wells is 37 inches. Maximum height of the cargo area is about 27 inches. Height of the bottom of the cargo area from the ground is 28 inches. That's how far you'd have to lift something to put it in there. Now you also have a very convenient sort of cargo hole at the back of the cargo area. And the measurements on that as close as I can figure. You're looking at about 15 inches for height and 31 inches for maximum width. Now just for fun, let's measure the frunk. I would say that the usable length is about 15 inches. The minimum width is about 28 inches. The maximum depth is about 15 inches. And the minimum depth is about 11 inches. But hey, that's a great place to hide contraband. Now we'll move on to the passenger space. Now for passenger space, I don't find the tape measure to be as useful, and I like to use myself as a measuring stick. I'm six foot five, so let's see if I can sit behind myself in a Tesla Model Y. Well, the answer to this question is not quite. So as you can see in the back seat here, I have enough headroom actually, but my knees are right up against the back seat. If I was sitting on the other side behind somebody who's not as weirdly tall as I am, I'd probably be fine. But we do have air vents and USB-C charging ports for our backseat passengers. So that's very thoughtful. Now we're gonna talk about build quality. Now, full disclosure, when I got in this car first thing this morning, the center screen was completely black. I had to try to reset it about three times by pushing the two buttons on the steering wheel and holding them and it tried to restart and failed and then it finally took so that was a little bit of a glitch the weird thing was the car was on and i could drive it i could put it in gear i could drive just fine i just had no idea how fast i was going or anything else because the screen was black i can give it a little bit of a pass because technically this car is about 60 percent car and 40 percent computer so that was a software issue not a hardware issue but it was still a glitch. Now, the other part of build quality that I wanna talk about is actually the way that the car's constructed. And the reason why I wanna do this is because when Tesla's first really came out and started becoming mainstream with the Model S, to my eye, they just looked terrible. The way that they were put together, the shut lines were wrong, the panel gaps were weird, the interior was kind of a hodgepodge of old Mercedes parts and other materials that were not pleasing. So with the Model Y, Tesla has now been at it for quite a while and I think they've improved. So let's test it out. So let's have a look at the panel gap consistency on the car. You can do this on your own car at home. What you do is you get a business card and you get a pen, pick a panel, and mark the gap and then go around to the car and see how consistent they are. So there's the panel gap on the left side of the trunk. Lines up pretty well with the front of the front door. Lines up pretty well with the shut line in between the two doors. Also, you'll notice this shut line is very even. That was where they had a lot of issues on the early Model S's. On the back door, it's not quite where I would like it, but it's better. They've improved. That panel gap is consistent. Coming around to the rear deck lid. 
I'd say that one is consistent as well. Look at that. Tesla is nailing the panel gap game. Oh, this one right here on the right side of the rear cargo hatch is a little bit misaligned. Back door looks good. If I didn't know any better, I'd almost say that shut line's a little bit better than the one in the front. That shut line looks good. That panel is consistent. That panel is consistent. Would you look at Tesla? I would say that they have greatly improved their build quality since those early Model S cars. Elon, you're doing a great job, buddy. Keep smoking weed with Joe Rogan. On the subject of build quality, we'll talk about the interior. And this was another area where I was really disappointed in the early Model S cars. But I can really see the progress that Tesla has made. Uh, this is a 2021 Model Y. And as far as the way that the interior is put together, it just feels much nicer. You know, this is about a $58,000 MSRP car because it does have the full autopilot system. And the interior materials are good. You can probably get nicer materials in um, similar MSRP cars from other automakers, but not that much nicer. You know, I'd say it's on par with... Uh, with what you can expect at this price point. But what you can't really get from another automaker, I don't think at this price point, is the overall cleanliness of the design. I mean, it's really minimalist in here and I've really grown to like it in my time with the car. You know, you don't even really see air vents on the dash. It does have them. The air comes out right here. And of course you've got the big kind of tablet type touchscreen that sort of dominates everything and uh, you don't have a whole lot of buttons you've got scroll wheels here for volume and you can push that one to do some voice command stuff which is important the turn signal stock and the shifter stock both feel nice in the early model s cars the turn signal stock was like an old mercedes c-class part uh, this is a nicer presentation it feels more bespoke to the car and yeah, I'm really, I'm impressed with Tesla and I'm proud of them for the, uh, what I consider to be great amount of progress made as far as both design and quality in a relatively short amount of time. So let's pay some more attention to this thing and have a look at the interior features. All right, so let's talk about interior features. And we got this giant touchscreen and some other little stuff. So let's talk about the little stuff. First of all, I love the storage on the interior. We have a nice deep storage bay here. This thing does wireless charging. And if we flip it up, we can see kind of the totality of the storage bay. And there is an additional USB port here that you could plug something else into if you wanted to charge something and keep it hidden. Close that up. We got some cup holders. And then we have some little storage here and some big storage here so you have tons of interior storage in the front of the tesla we have a giant moonroof which is cool but doesn't seem to have a cover and it doesn't seem to open so i will say that the sun has not bothered my bald head since i've been driving this car and i am kind of sensitive to that for my follically challenged reasons but so far hasn't been an issue but now, let's talk about this beast. All right, so this touchscreen is what dominates the Tesla Model Y's interior, and it's really your only source of information. You have no additional speedometer, there's no heads-up display in the car, which is something that it could use. So your speed, your charging information, the map, everything is shown on this screen. And in some ways it's kind of annoying. So I'll give you an example. I was trying to figure out how many miles are on this car and I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure it out. I went to car, I was looking at all this stuff and where is it? It's in software. That's what shows you your odometer and that's where it shows up. 
And it's kind of interesting that it would be in software and it wouldn't necessarily be in driving, it wouldn't be in quick controls. I guess Tesla doesn't really care that much that you know how many miles are on your vehicle. And the fact that they put it in software really, to me, it speaks to some of the design philosophy behind this car. It's a laptop that you can drive in some ways. It's absolutely the best driving laptop that I've ever been in, but you find the odometer under software. So that's one interesting thing. And you know, it, it's not necessarily intuitive to find everything that you're looking for on first glance, but one thing I love about it is we do have voice commands by pushing this, show the map there you go there's your map find me a target there you go there's all my nearest targets and if i want to go to one calculating route no problem and i'm going to cancel because i don't really feel like going to target right now so there is some cool stuff that you can do with it there um, and the other thing, or one of the many other things we have, if we go here, we have a toy box. And this is pretty famous, you know, you have a bunch of different stuff that you can do with your Tesla. You can have it make fart noises, you can make your own little songs, you can put the fireplace on. If you want to get cozy, we go into romance mode, and look at that. We are currently in the only new car with romance mode and we can go into the sketch pad and we can draw some stuff if we want to and if you've never driven one of these cars you might think that this is kind of a gimmick and it sort of is but there's a big point to the gimmick and that is that if you're living the tesla life you're gonna have to stop at a supercharging station and sit there for 20 or 30 minutes while you charge your batteries so the car gives you stuff to do while you're charging your batteries. We can go into entertainment, we've got solitaire, we can play games, we've got fallout, backgammon, all kinds of stuff. So it, it's actually kind of a thoughtful thing that these gimmicks are in here because the gimmicks are meant to keep you from getting bored while you're charging your car. And it, actually, in a way, it's pretty smart. Um, as far as the music goes, you have FM radio, you have Spotify, you have whatever's on your own phone, you have karaoke, so if you want to sing along with various songs in your Tesla, you can do that, which seems like it would be a distraction while you're driving, but it does actually show you the lyrics and stuff, that's pretty funny. Uh, but you don't have AM radio because electric cars with their high voltage systems it interferes with the AM signal in such a way that it really doesn't work well. Uh, and you also don't have any kind of serious XM satellite radio either built into the car. Obviously you have Bluetooth audio streaming so if you want to um, have your Sirius XM app on your phone you can listen to it that way. But it's kind of interesting that you don't really have those traditional sources of, of entertainment as far as AM radio, which is, there's technical reasons for that, and um, the satellite radio. If you do go into the FM radio, it does have HD, so a lot of AM stations are simulcast on HD radio, which is the different bands that you can pick up uh, from FM. So it is possible that you'll still be able to listen to your favorite AM station if that's a concern. Of course, you also have to go into the touchscreen to set your climate control, do all that kind of stuff. But again, there is a workaround. Set to 65 degrees. And there we go, we have set it to 65 degrees with our voice. Turn the fan down. Fan speed decreased by one. So. You can control a lot of what's in the touchscreen with your voice commands, um, but there's some of them that kind of don't make sense to me. For example, tune to FM 93.1. This command is not yet available. So you can't control the FM radio with the voice controls, at least not that I've figured out and I've tried like the Dickens. I guess that's more of a legacy automaker thing. 
Of course, if we go here, we've got a butt ton of kind of different cameras that we can look at. That's directly behind me. This is to the side of me. That's pretty cool. But one thing I'm a little disappointed that the car doesn't have is it doesn't have blind spot monitoring. Um, there's no lights in the mirrors that actually tell you where the blind spots are or if there's a car in your blind spot, I should say. And I don't know why it doesn't have that. That seems like a pretty obvious safety feature that a car like this should include. It will warn you on the screen when you're driving. It'll kind of give you a little logo when there's a car in your blind spot there on the graphic. But it would be much more, in my opinion, effective to have it on the mirrors where most cars have it. But anyway, Tesla decided not to do that. Another interesting thing that I'll point out here, if I go into car and I go into autopilot, all of the advanced autopilot stuff is beta. So auto steer is beta, navigate on autopilot is beta, traffic light and stop sign control is beta, summon is beta. So all of that kind of advanced techie stuff is all in beta. And I'm just going to let you know right now, folks, that stuff is all going to be in beta forever. Because that way, anytime that there is an accident or an issue with any of those systems, Tesla can say, well, it's in beta, so what would you expect? And when you turn it on, you have to accept all this. Auto steer features currently in beta. Blah, blah, blah. Do you want to enable auto steer while it is in beta? So it makes you acknowledge the fact that it's in beta. The green light chime is not in beta. Full self-driving visualization preview. So that's a little bit of a cop out to me. It's definitely something that the legacy automakers would not do, um, but it is a way for, I think, Tesla to potentially get around some litigation and or some laws maybe i don't know uh, but definitely the car lets you know that you are taking responsibility for your actions when you activate all the autopilot and the summon and navigate on autopilot you're kind of on your own on that one because it's all in beta mode as it will be forever now let's take it for a test drive and see how it works All right, so driving the Model Y. The first thing you'll notice, if you've never driven one of these before and you give it the gas, or I shouldn't say gas, if you give it the throttle, this car is fast. I think this one's the dual motor, so supposedly zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds. And I can believe that. It is, uh, it is a quick car. This one's got about 2,000 miles on it. And it does have some squeaks and rattles over these bumps. I kind of chose this test drive route to test that out. Few more than I would like in a brand new car-ish, but um, I wouldn't say a deal breaker. All cars get squeaks and rattles eventually. Beeping at me for not stopping quick enough for this Honda in front of me, although I did bring the vehicle to a complete and safe stop. And one thing I really love about driving electric cars if you've never driven one, most electric cars, and this Tesla is no exception, uh, do something called one pedal driving. So basically what happens when you take your foot off of the throttle, the accelerator, whatever we call it now, uh, the vehicle goes into kind of a regenerative braking mode to try to regain some energy from the kinetic energy of decelerating. And so if you time it correctly, which I didn't quite do coming up to that last stop, you can actually drive the car and not use the brake unless it's an emergency situation because it will bring itself to a complete stop with that sort of regenerative braking. And then it will, with the Tesla, it will kind of do an auto hold thing and just sit there at a dead stop until you need to get moving again. And that to me is a great feature. It takes a little bit of getting used to uh, again, if, if you've never driven one of these, the first time you drive it, when you take your foot off of the accelerator, it's, it's going to feel strange because you're not accustomed to a car slowing down like that when you take your foot off. 
but it is normal and once you kind of figure out how to time it you can drive realistically without using the brake and it's pretty convenient it's pretty cool it's something enjoyable you know there's a lot of enjoyable things about driving an electric car uh, and a lot of I'll say car guys and I'll be gender specific there because it's typically men you know really hate electric cars and you get these jerks with their Cummins diesel Dodges rolling coal on Priuses or blocking up the supercharger things at Tesla's and I just don't understand that why are you so look at this stopping stopping haven't used the brake I'm a little far maybe into the uh, into the crosswalk but what the heck nobody's crossing I don't understand these people that have that attitude of oh I drive a Cummins Dodge pickup with no diesel particulate filter and I hate Tesla's and I hate Priuses so I'm gonna clog up all of the supercharger stations and I'm gonna blast my dirty diesel smoke on this Prius on the highway you know calm down worry about your own business if somebody else wants to drive a Tesla hey good for them and if somebody wants to drive a diesel Dodge good for them I mean everybody makes their own choice on how they're gonna spend their money with a car but I don't necessarily think that anyone needs to get offended uh, based on someone else's choice as a consumer and or a driver and by the way that goes for Tesla fans too because if you're a Tesla hardcore Tesla fan and you're watching this some of you are very obnoxious on the old social media you know hey life is live and let live baby there goes a Tesla there's a happy Tesla person oh we got a green light what the heck let's give it the beans here that's not even full throttle either <laughs> yeah yeah these are fast cars there is no doubt about it the, the the Tesla is a lot of fun to drive the steering too is just fantastic on this car I'm gonna have to use the brake a little bit here uh, the steering is just fantastic on this car you can change the modes and I have it set to sport mode right now where it really feels heavy it actually reminds me of an e90 BMW 3 series which is like the previous previous generation at this point because um, it just it has a lot of heft to it it doesn't quite have the same road feel that an e90 would have had because that was the last three they made with the hydraulic steering system and I think the only automaker that's really managed to get the proper road feel out of an electric steering system is Porsche with the 991911. Um, so the steering's a little bit numb, but it's got a great weight to it. And it's it's really satisfying to kind of turn that wheel and put a little force on it. And you can adjust that if you don't want to. You can put it, the steering down into like a comfort mode and it's easier to manipulate. But I've been enjoying driving it in the sport mode. And you know, if you just drive this car at normal speeds, I mean, you're not gonna be doing zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds everywhere you go it's it's great it's comfortable car to drive green light it's very very nice I, I really don't have a whole lot of criticism it is SUV-esque this one so it has some body lean in a fast turn but nothing that I would consider to be unacceptable as far as these types of vehicles go I mean I think that you know, even though it's obviously at a higher price point and technologically very different, I think this is kind of aimed at, you know, that kind of Honda CRV, Toyota RAV4, maybe more accurately BMW X3, uh, Mercedes GLC end of the market, and I think the handling is is definitely on par with those vehicles. Um, the low center of gravity of the battery pack certainly helps, but it is a heavy car. Obviously, electric cars, because of the big battery packs, do have a little bit of a weight penalty, but those electric motors and all that torque at zero RPM certainly make up for it off the line. All right, we're going to do a little more freeway driving at night, and we are going to play with the autopilot system. Now I have all the autopilot settings turned on in the screen. So with the right stock, the one you use to change gear, 
bump that down twice and my autopilot is engaged. I'm gonna use the right thumb wheel to crank my maximum speed up slightly so that I can keep up with the Southern California freeway nighttime traffic. And we are gonna see what this thing does. Now, when you signal, the autopilot will change lanes if it's safe to do so. And we're driving. Now, I have tried to use this to navigate to a destination, and it almost got there, but it didn't want to make a left-hand turn across traffic. Um, I don't know if I was supposed to signal to have it make that left-hand turn, but it was literally like an unprotected left, so it just told me to do it and then drove by, even though the autopilot was fully engaged at the time. The other criticism that I have of it, and I don't know how these people do it, you know, you read these stories about people in Teslas putting them on autopilot and then going to sleep. That's ridiculous because the car will, see right now it's telling me, ah. So it tells me to apply slight steering pressure to keep the system engaged. And then as soon as I do that, it disengages itself. So right now, I think it's following the car in front of me, but the steering's not engaged, so I'm gonna bump my stock, and we're back on. It says, please keep your hands on the wheel, be prepared to take over at any time. So my hands are very lightly on the wheel, and that doesn't seem to be enough to keep it happy that there's a person here. It, it occasionally wants light pressure applied to the wheel, making it change lanes, it does that. And then when I apply what I consider to be light pressure on the steering wheel, it disengages the autopilot steering, and then we're right back where we started. So the systems, I mean, it's not bad, but you know, it says right on the screen that it's in beta, and in some ways it kind of feels like it to me. And I'm very accustomed to using adaptive cruise control in a car. Uh, my daily driver, which is a 2020 Subaru Impreza, has adaptive cruise control. And if I'm ever stuck in traffic or on a long highway drive and I just feel like letting the car do some of the work, I'll set that. And I feel like I personally am more comfortable, see, apply slight steering. Okay, now that made it happy. There goes a cop. Southern California, I'm going 12 miles an hour over the speed limit and I got passed by a cop. It's one of the reasons why I love living down here. Um, so, I think that probably if I got more used to this system and how to use it, it would, I'd be more comfortable with it. But as it stands, just kind of in the couple of days that I've been playing with it, you know, it's good, but it's not fantastic in my opinion. And, Part of that, I'll admit, might be user error. Um, it is pretty cool to hit the signal and just change lanes. I mean, it it works, it does its thing. It's just, to me, it's a little bit finicky. And you would definitely have to develop a level of trust with it that maybe I don't have, although I do have trust in sort of self-driving autonomous systems because I've used them quite a bit in many different makes and models of automobile. Changing lanes again to get around this truck. So this is a pretty good stretch. It's pretty happy right now. There is a stanced, potentially Scion FRS or BRZ or 86 or something. Ooh, and there's a Honda Civic. Changing lanes aggressively. These gentlemen want, oh, okay, apply slight steering. All right, that made it happy. So I'm getting better at using it as I go along, which I'm sure there is a learning curve with these, but I don't have unlimited time with this car to learn everything that there is about it. But I have been playing with this uh, autopilot system for a couple of days. Honestly, to me, there are a lot of selling points on this car, a lot. 
I love the acceleration. I love all the storage and the and the packaging, the frunk, the rear cargo area, the cargo areas in the front. Um, I love the steering feel. I love the way that the car, I don't know, this car just has something that's missing from a lot of modern automobiles that it just, it feels like it was, you know, maybe I'll give Elon Musk credit. I don't know how much hands-on experience or, or you know, hands-on he really is with the with the overall design philosophy of these Tesla vehicles, but it does feel like this came from somebody who had a vision, you know? This is what I want. I want a clean, simplistic interior. I don't want to see air vents. That's ugly. I don't want extra lights for blind spot monitors. That's stupid. I want the car to drive itself. I want it to be really fast. I want put stuff. I want it to make fart noises in the thing. You know, the car, this car has personality. That It really, truly does. And people who say electric cars are boring, a Tesla is not a boring car, at least not this one. And it's, it's cool, you'll like one of these if you drive it, but I don't really consider this autopilot to be a major selling point. Although, I will admit that as time goes on, I seem to be getting better with it. But at the same time, I'm not, me personally, and this is my personal opinion, I'm not any happier in here than I would be if I was just using adaptive cruise control and using the steering wheel to change lanes myself when I needed to. Um, but yeah, this is, this is a car, I understand, I get it now. I get why people like these cars so much. And, um, oh, and it just turned off steering assist for no apparent reason. Excuse me, I don't know why I did that. Now, as it's turned the steering assist off, let me just try something here. If I change lanes, so it's still doing like an adaptive cruise control thing. And I still have my blinker on because I'm an idiot. It just turns off the auto steer. So there you go. You can make it just be an adaptive cruise control. I learn something new every day. If you want to just use it as adaptive cruise control, just crank the steering wheel around to stress it out. Now this will be a good one. I'm going to I'm gonna turn the steering. Oh, steering's not on. All right, steering's back on. Let's see how it handles. We have a freeway interchange coming up that it's going to be forced into if I stay in this lane. So I have my hands lightly on the steering wheel. The automatic steering is engaged. My autopilot is engaged. It's breaking for the curve. It's breaking for the curve. It's steering around the curve. You can go faster through this curve, Tesla. Come on, let's be serious, but that's okay. And we're on the 55 South. Change lanes, good. Blinker off automatically because it knows it's done changing lanes, good. Change lanes again, mid curve, no problem. Yeah, so the autopilot works, it's cool. You can make it just adaptive cruise, I just figured out. I'm sure I'm getting all kind of comments for people who didn't watch the whole video or just think I'm stupid. And that's fine, you can think I'm stupid. I'm just a guy trying to make YouTube videos and live my dream of being an automotive journalist but I have limited resources and limited time. So I'm doing the best I can with what I got. And I hope you can appreciate that. And my automatic steering just went off, but that's okay. So yeah, to sum up the Tesla test drive, a lot of fun to drive. If you ever get the chance to get behind the wheel of a Tesla, I say go for it, because it's a good time. So that's my review of the Tesla Model Y. I gotta say, I really was impressed by this car and I'm sort of starting to understand why people are so passionate about these cars and this brand. I just wish they were a little less obnoxious on Twitter. If you liked my review, please like and subscribe. And as always, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.